A survey found that women's heights are normally distributed with a mean of 64.2 inches and a standard deviation of 4.2 inches. The survey also found that men's heights are normally distributed with a mean of 70.1 inches and a standard deviation of 4.1 inches. Most of the live characters employed at an amusement park have height requirements of a minimum of 57 inches and a maximum of 63 inches. Complete parts A and B below. In part A, we want to find the percentage of men meeting the height requirement and what does the result suggest about the genders of the people who are employed as characters at the amusement park. Well, to help visualize the area of interest, we're going to sketch the normal curve and label the mean in the approximate position of the minimum of 57 and the maximum 63. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have our bell curve. And so we know that the mean is 70, in this case here, since we're dealing with men, the mean is 70.1. And we know that there's a minimum value of 57. So x1 would be equal to 57. And then we also have 63, which is also going to be below there. So that's x2, which is equal to 63. And what we're looking for is the shaded area that's in between here. Now what we have to do first is we need to convert them into z-scores. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and then put this graph just a little bit up further here so we can put in our z-scores. So when we have our z-scores we know that the mean is going to be 0. We're looking for z-score 1 and then there's going to be z-score 2 which is associated with 63. z-score 1 is associated with x1 which is 57. Okay so now what we want to do is we want to find z-score 1 when the value of x1 is 57, the mean is 70.1, and the standard deviation is 4.1, and then we're going to round it to two decimal places. So what we're doing is the following. We have x1, which is 57. We know that the mean is 70.1, and we know that the standard deviation is 4.1. So if we take 57, and then subtract 70.1 and divide it by 4.1, we get negative 3.195121, and rounding that to two decimal places gives us the following result. It gives us negative 3.20. So therefore, Z1 is going to be negative 3.20. Okay, next. Now we want to find the corresponding Z2 score. So if we want to find the corresponding Z2 score, what we want to do now is now use x2 to be 63, the mean to be 70.1, and the standard deviation to be 4.1. So here we know that x2 is 63, we know that the mean is 70.1, and we know that the standard deviation is 4.1. So if we take the value of 63 subtract 70.1 divided by 4.1 we get negative 1.731707 which rounding to two decimal places gives us negative 1.73 so therefore we get negative 1.73 okay now let's check here okay here's zero and to the left of zero should be negative 1.73 which is right and then further away is negative 3.20 so that looks about right so now we want to find the area that's between these two z-scores. So to find the area between the two z-scores, we're going to use StatCrunch. 
So to use StatCrunch, we want to find the probability that negative 3.20 is going to be in between, x is going to be in between that value and negative 1.73. And that's what we're looking for. So we're going to go ahead and plug this into StatCrunch. So the first thing we're going to go is go to Stat, Calculators, and scroll all the way down to Normal. And then since we're looking for between those scores, we're going to select between. And then we know our mean is 0 and our standard deviation is 1 since we're using the z-scores. So to the left here, it's going to be negative 3.20. And then over here, we're going to have negative 1.73. And then we're going to select Compute. So if we select Compute, we should get that probability. Now if you notice here, negative 3.20 goes way off the, the graph and that's why it doesn't show that it's actually in between, but our graph does show that it's in between, which is correct. So we get the probability to be 0 0.0411. And so therefore, the area of the shaded region is 0 0.0411. If we multiply the area by 100% to find the percentage of men who meet that height requirement, the percentage of men who meet that height requirement is then 4.11%. Now, since most men do not meet the height requirement, it is likely that most of the characters are women. Part B. If the height requirements are changed to exclude only the tallest 50% of men and the shortest 5% of men, what are the new height requirements? So we first sketch a normal distribution curve and write the given probability or percentage in the appropriate region of the graph and identify the x values being sought. And since we want to exclude the tallest 50% or 0 0.50 of the data and the shortest 5% or 0 0.05 of the data, we will shade the area that's in between. So let's go ahead and create that graph. So here's our bell curve. Okay, again, we know that the mean is 70.1. Okay, so we want the data of the shortest 5%. So 5% is going to be here, which is 0 0.05. And then we have the tallest 50%. So the tallest 50% is going to be located everything here, which is 0. 5, 0. And so what we want to do is we'll shade the area that's in between. So let's find the area that's in between here. Okay. So we know that this area here represents 0 0.05. And we know that this area here represents 0 0.50. Okay, so the area that would be in between here, okay, would be the following. Well, since we know that the left half is 50%, 0 0.50 minus 0 0.05 is equal to 0 0.45. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to find out what is this value here that is x1 and then what is this value over here that is x2. And then again, according to our z-score, we know that the mean is going to be 0. We have z1 and then we have z2.
So we want to find the z-scores that correspond to the left of 0.05 and the z-score to the right of 0.50. So we're going to let z1 be the z-score to the left of 0.05 and z2 be the z-score for the right of 0.50. So let's find those z-scores using StatCrunch. So I'm going to open up StatCrunch. I'm going to go ahead and then refresh this. And so we want to be able to first find the z-score to the left of that. So we want to make sure it, our mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. We have less than or equal to, so we're going to put in 0.05 and select Compute. And therefore we get negative 1 point, in this case here, we get negative 1.64. So here we get negative 1.64, which makes sense because it's to the left of 0. Now we want to find the area, which is 0 0.50 here, to find our z-score. So we're going to go ahead and come back up here, open up StatCrunch. We're going to go to Options and then select Refresh. Make sure now you select the greater than or equal to. And now let's put in 0.50 and you can see that we get a z-score of 0 because it's right in the middle. So there is our z-score which is right in the middle. So therefore the z-score is 0.00. .00. So we can see that Z1 is negative 1.64 and Z2 is equal to 0.00. .00. And now we're going to plug in those values to find out what those X values are. So to obtain the corresponding X value, we're going to substitute mu to be 70.1, which is the mean, the Z score of negative 1.64 and the standard deviation of 4.1 into the formula. And so this is what we're going to do here. We have the mean to be 70.1, the z-score for z1 is negative 1.64, and the standard deviation is 4.1. Now again, according to ORV operations, we're going to take 4.1, multiply it by negative 1.64, and then add 70.1 to get 63.376, and rounding that to one decimal place, we get 63.4. Okay, now, thus, we would say that the new minimum height requirement is 63.4 inches. So up here, we can then say that the minimum requirement is 63.4 inches. So now we can see that to obtain the corresponding x value, now we're going to substitute... Z, uh, the mean to be uh, 70.1 and then we're going to use our Z2 score of 0, 0.00 and then the standard deviation would be 4.1. Now as you can see here anything times 0 is going to give us 0 and then plus 70.1 is going to give us 70.1 which basically is the mean. So therefore we would say that the maximum in this case is going to be 70.1 and that's what's going to represent x2. So the maximum height requirement is going to be 70.1 inches and so we would say the following that the new height requirements are a minimum of 63.4 inches and a maximum of 70.1 inches.